Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm your host, Tony. Now, about a month or so back, I did an episode on unused attacks and animations in Zelda Ocarina of Time. Basically, different movesets and techniques that Link had, and idle animations, uh, that were originally in the game, in the beta version, or alpha version, but the developers didn't end up using for whatever reason. And there's one particular move that I kind of skipped over and didn't mention in that one because I thought it merited its own episode. And that is the Blade Beam. Sometimes called the Sword Beam. I'm going to be kind of interchangeably using those terms back and forth. Now, Zelda fans at the time remembered the Blade Beam from the original. If you had full health, your sword would automatically fire a beam of light. And the beam looked like the sword itself. This trend continued in Zelda 2, and of course, the SNES's Link to the Past. But not in Ocarina of Time, though I thought we'd get it. It made sense after all, even Link's Awakening had it. In the early screens of the game, we saw what looked like some sort of a beam of light ejecting from Link's sword. But it never made it in. Was it too difficult to make this attack work in three dimensions? Was it better for more of a grid-based 2D system? i.e. being more sensible to use on a linear plane. Now, Majora's Mask, often a receptacle for unused Ocarina of Time ideas, was finally able to put it to good use in a 3D world. If you collect all of the masks and obtain the Fierce Deity Mask, the Sword Beam is back. It's a bit different, though, being a crescent shape, and it utilizes your magic meter. However, they did get around any potential issues of utilizing it in three dimensions because it can only be used when Z-targeting, which makes a lot of sense. So the beam actually follows the boss around, and it can travel up or down or side to side to some degree. Now, it's not perfect. As you can see here, I'm still missing a bit, depending on where Majora moves, but it's pretty, pretty good. And pretty overpowered as well. It is the Fierce Deity, after all, so I mean, what do you expect? Now I imagine you're saying, Tony, I thought we were talking about Ocarina of Time and the Blade Beam in Ocarina of Time specifically. Well, there are a number of different mods that we're going to take a look at, all of which kind of use their own means to actually restore the Blade Beam. So let's dive in. So this is actually a restored Blade Beam. But what exactly are we looking at, and how do we come to this? Well, the process was relatively complex, and it was worked on by a number of people, including DL77, and then later modified by Sakura89 and Spinout, to make sure that the actual visual was correct. So I'm going I'm to explain it as simply as I can. Now, if you know more details here, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I always welcome that. The Blade Beam exists in the game with two related animations, but no catalyst to call the Blade Beam into action, and no catalyst to connect the two animations into a, quote, Blade Beam animation. So with the hack, with the mod, the Blade Beam was taken and placed into the spin attack, and then an animation hack was created to represent it visually. The animation, like I said, being based off of those pre-release screenshots that we showed earlier. So basically, take the Blade Beam pieces, plop it on the spin attack, and then adjust what it looks like. And again, the animation is based off of those pre-release screenshots that we showed earlier. Pretty damn cool to see this thing in action, finally. It is a bit confusing, though, in terms of distance. The animation is close, but the attack goes a little bit further, but not a lot further. And uh, using it with some enemies, like the Tektites, you know, between them often being on uneven ground and the blade beam having relatively short range, it kind of makes the attack useless. You gotta spend so much time charging up and then BAM! You're slammed before you can do anything. Let's go ahead and do one more very important test. On the cuckoos. One shot. So this thing is pretty overpowered, just like in Majora's Mask. This blade beam is hitting things in front, on the side, and somewhat behind, almost as if it's still the spin attack. And actually it is, it, it's because it is still basically the spin attack. Remember that issue with distance I mentioned earlier? 
The blade beam goes as far as the normal, fully charged orange spin attack. The next sword beam I'm going to show you is actually ported from Majora's Mask. I think this is probably more representative of what it would have been if it was actually kept in Ocarina of Time at all. Now there's a particularly interesting nuance about this restoration, but before we get to it, let's actually take a look at the beam itself. Now this seems much more like a sword beam. And we actually even get two levels, both blue and orange, like the spin attack, which is nice touch. And of course, let's go ahead and do the most important test that we can do with the cuckoos. This one doesn't seem nearly as strong, unfortunately. But look at this. It's actually a clean shot with the pots. But notice how, unlike Majora's Mask, it doesn't track, which really, really sucks when you're on an incline. And again, it kind of makes it useless. So why doesn't it track? Well, remember I said there was an interesting nuance about this? It's actually not the Fierce Deity's Blade Beam. But wait a minute. It's not the Fierce Deity's Blade Beam, but it's from Majora's Mask. How is that possible? Well... It's actually an unused version of Young Link's Blade Beam. That's right, Young Link was originally supposed to have, and it's still in the code, a Blade Beam. But it's unfinished, which is why, probably why, it doesn't track like Fierce Deity's Blade Beam does. Now granted, it's more finished than it was in Ocarina of Time, but it's still not fully functional. The next question that immediately came to my mind was why didn't they just port the Fierce Deity Sword Beam instead? The thing is that would have potentially have been possible, but it would have taken heavy modification for both Young and Adult Link to be able to utilize it. However, Young Link's Beam didn't require that heavy modification. Now, this modification was actually possible because of the Blade Beam Remnant in Ocarina. The mod essentially completed the fragment of the remnant of the Sword Beam. Now compare that to the previous modification we took a look at, which utilized the action of the blade beam with an animation hack. Much different, right? And granted, for the time it was awesome, but this is really a much more complete and definitive version of what it could have been. Now let's take a look at one more modification. This beam's origin is the same as before as in it came from Majora's Mask, but there are additional modifications by Victor Hale, who, by the way, helped me significantly with this episode. There are a few neat bits here. Not only do we have the sword beam, but we also haven't fully sacrificed the spin attack. Now we get both. Normally the first level of the spin attack is blue, and the second is orange. Victor noted that many of the beta screens that he saw of the game never actually showed the blue, so he opted to keep the orange as the first level of charge and the blade beam as the second level of charge. So now we get both. Options are good, right? He also added some of those old beta animations that we talked about in our previous episode. So Link unsheaths the sword first, and then he swipes. Two button presses. Not like in the retail version, where he takes out the sword and swipes at the same time. And we have a manual jump. And we have our forward flipping attack. Cuckoo chicken test. Wait a minute, this looks pretty familiar. So hey, thank you everybody again for watching. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you again to Victor Hale for helping me out with this episode. Could not have done it without you. And uh, thanks for subbing, sharing the video, and if you want to support the show further, we do have some new Patreon rewards, so check out the description below. But aside from that, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.